morning and welcome to a &E TV. Today we're joined for Morning Coffee by film producer Mohamed al -Turki. Good morning, Mohamed. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And to kick things off, can you talk us through your morning routine? Um, morning routine, it depends if it's an early call time or it's a later <laughs> call time. Uh, if it's quite early, I'd love to wake up an hour before wherever I have to be because give myself 30 minutes uh, to get myself up and running and then I'm not a breakfast person, so probably uh, grab a cup of coffee and then eat whatever that I can grab in my hand. Okay. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you how you think you're inspiring others from your home country with what you do. Well, I hope I'm inspiring others from my home country. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I started uh, doing film, cinemas in Saudi were banned. Yeah. Uh, the ban lift just happened about a year ago. Uh, so I chose a profession that I completely believed in. I loved the form of film and the art form of uh, just uh, creating uh, content and uh, sharing stories to the world. And when I did that, it was a profession that a lot of people um, had questions about back home. Mm -hmm. uh, but even then, when I did that, I realized I uh, have established a following. And... Um, I've noticed a few years down in my career, I was uh, giving a talk at New York Film Academy and um, there was about 80% of the audience were Saudi students and the moderator um, told me that there are 6,000 Saudi students who have um, registered to study film wow. and this was before uh, cinema was mm -hmm. permitted in Saudi. So I just realized that was a huge thing. That's amazing. So uh, a few people told me this, and I've read them my comments on Instagram. Um, they have said, we saw that you chose the path to go into filmmaking, so we decided to do it. If you can do it, we can do it. And I was like, that's a huge responsibility, but I hope uh, I could help in the future. Okay. And it must have been a big, <laughs> big deal for you when you chose that career. What made you, what inspired you to do that? Well, I always loved film. Uh, film was a big part of my life growing up. Um, I've watched so many films with my dad, with my mother, um, especially when cinemas were not permitted in Saudi, when we had a chance to travel to go to London. I remember when we were younger, uh, we would get the time out at the What's On magazine and uh, we would uh, highlight the movies we want to see. And it was a thing in the summer, we had to watch as much movies yeah. as we could before going back home or going to like the HMV in Leicester Square or the Tower Records. and bringing with us box sets of videos and DVDs back then <laughs> to bring to Saudi. Okay, and how do you think what you're doing is contributing to the industry in Saudi? So, um, what I realized what happened in Saudi right now um, with opening movie theaters, and I'm actually flying to Saudi uh, today because tomorrow on the 21st of March is the opening of the Saudi Film Festival and uh, the government is uh, pushing the festival and uh, <clears throat> I'm participating in a talk called uh, Journey in Hollywood and um, when the festival contacted me originally it was supposed to be a small talk for about 60 people and then they have contacted me again and said uh, we have uh, more uh, we have um, interest from uh, the participants mm -hmm. could you speak in front of an audience of 300 wow. and I'm like yes I don't <laughs> think there's a difference speaking in front yeah. of 60 or 300 people I'm gonna have, do the exact same thing <laughs> so I'm excited that it's being supported by the government um, they're pushing a lot but also I've always said this and mentioned this uh, multiple times in interviews and I would I would repeat it um, the cinema industry in Saudi and the GCC is relatively new mm -hmm. But in terms of Saudis, I think we have excelled in a way um, individually. Uh, we have a few examples. Uh, we have Dina Shadabi, who is an actress who is in the show Jack Ryan, which is like an American mm -hmm. hit show. Um, we also have um, Saudi director Haifa Mansour, who her film won multiple festivals. And she was also a jury member in Cannes Film Festival as a Saudi woman. That's a big achievement. She's also directed Hollywood films, uh, Mary Shelley starring uh, Elle Fanning and also she's had a Netflix film Napoli Ever After that she directed. So as a, as a she's like I feel like she's our Saudi pride. Uh, 
Also, uh, there's the actress Ahad Kamal, who is in the show Collateral with Carrie Mulligan. So I feel like in just a few years, yeah. these are Saudis who are, have um, crossed over and have been, sh have been um, a perfect example for this industry. Okay. And you mentioned the cinema openings that happened last year. What are your thoughts on how the industry is changing over there? And the industry is changing because there's a lot of push in investing in the entertainment and art world. A lot of things have been happening this past year that I've never imagined that would happen in Saudi. We have a lot of musical performances. They just built an opera house in Riyadh. Um, they have permitted um, opening a school of music oh. and they honored um, Arabic um, big Arab, uh, Arab um, legendary musicians uh, to participate, to be part of the school and to be uh, and being honored also. Wow. Uh, other than that, in Saudi, we had concerts. We had Mariah Carey there last month. Yeah. This week in uh, the Eastern province where I'm from, where the film festival is being held, the day after on the 22nd, there's a concert with Akon, Amr Diab and um, French Montana. Wow. So it's just showing you how it's really yeah. changing fast. Also, they have introduced something that was not introduced in Saudi in the past. Uh, we had a lot of nice restaurants, but we didn't have the prime dining experience. Now we have prime dining experiences. In Riyadh, they've opened like restaurants uh, like Cipriani, Nizomi, and so on. And now they're having them. Uh, they're having the pop-ups all over Saudi. Oh, wow. So now during the music festival and the film festival in the eastern province, they have all these restaurants. Wow, amazing. Yeah, it is exciting. Yeah, really exciting. And can you tell us a little bit about your new movie? Yes. So I'm working on a film called Dreamland. And it sheds, lights on, uh, it sheds light on the opiate crisis, which is the second largest cause of death in America. And I think it's uh, really important uh, to work on movies with a social conscious. Mm -hmm. um, I think my motto in movies uh, have been um, shedding light on important issues that the world have, um, are going through today. In 2012, when I worked on a movie called Arbitrage, uh, starring Richard Gere, directed by Nicholas Jarecki. Uh, that movie was in the aftermath of the financial crisis. Um, after that, also, when I worked on 99 Homes, that was um, the aftermath of the housing crisis in Florida. Yeah. So, and then also I worked with Richard Gere again in a movie called Time Out of Mind, which also sheds light about the homeless community. So for me, I love working on films that are not just entertaining, but also have a social conscious and have a message. Um, you'd go watch these movies and then I'd like the viewers to go back home and to think about what they watched. Okay. And what's the biggest challenge that you face? The biggest challenge? There's many challenges. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the biggest challenge is, I think it's a personal thing with uh, me it's a character that I've worked on many years to change is being impatient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what would you say is your biggest achievement so far? My biggest achievement, okay, on a personal note, maybe surviving my 20s <laughs> <laughs> and being content um, with myself uh, and my inner peace, finding my inner peace. Yeah. You know, I feel like when you're 20, it's uh, when in your 20s you, uh, struggle to find your identity, to know who you are, mm -hmm. um, uh, to um, fight your insecurities. And I feel when you're 30, like I'm uh, 32 right now, and I feel uh, it's a complete night and day comparison to who I was in my yeah. 20s. Um, but my biggest achievements uh, in terms of uh, films, um, which I always um, uh, pinch myself because I think it's uh, very surreal is I've worked on two of my films that were nominated for Golden Globes which is Arbitrage and 99 Homes and for me being Saudi and being able to attend these events um, even before cinema was uh, permitted and being part of um, a team that has been nominated means a lot to me yeah. and hopefully like my goal is to um, hopefully get an Oscar nomination. That's uh, something that um, I would like to achieve. Mm -hmm. But also in terms of Arabic cinema and um, Arabs in Hollywood, uh, this year was a very important year. Um, 
I was there, I attended the Oscar after parties, but just to be there this year, having um, Arab, um, Egyptian American actor Rami Malek mm -hmm. winning the Oscar, saying a speech about how important um, him being a son yeah. of an immigrant moving um, to the United States and talking about his um, background was incredible. But yeah. the same also Nadine Lebeki, the Lebanese director, was nominated for Kefirinim, which just shows you there's an incredible, uh, t those are incredible, talented yeah. people from the Middle East. And me being Saudi and being there just made me very happy. <laughs> Okay, great. And who's the person you would say that inspires you the most? Inspires me the most. <laughs> That's also a lot of people do inspire me. Uh, but in terms of inspiration, um, I think it comes close to home. My family in general, my mother and father, they inspire me okay. uh, a lot. Cool. <laughs> and do you have a personal motto that you live by? A personal motto? Yes, it's... Uh, to be quite honest, it changes throughout the years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like nothing is impossible. And my most personal motto is tomorrow is a new day. Okay. So if you're having the worst day work-wise, relationship-wise, financial-wise, there's yeah. nothing you can do. You can just sleep on it. Tomorrow is a new day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what about a professional motto? <laughs> be persistent, even though sometimes being persistent can come across as... I don't know if the right term of word is annoying, but I think, <laughs> I think you can hustle through it. <laughs> okay. And if you were to give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, honestly, I would not give my younger self a piece of advice. I believe everything happens for a reason and everything that I went through bad or good and the struggles have made me who I am today but I would not want to live through my 20s again <laughs> <laughs> okay. and what about if you told yourself something 10 years from now what would you tell yourself hmm. well 10 years ago let's go let's go this way uh, 10 years ago I would not have imagined being where I am today okay <laughs> so I'm sure 10 years later I would be surprised with what's going to mm -hmm. go on. And also, from my 20s and 30s, I've realized when I, when I was younger, I kept on saying in the future, in the future, or like, oh, that's when I'm 30s, thinking yeah. it's like a very long time apart. But it really does go by really quick. I just, even today, I question myself, where did the time go? Like, it feels like yesterday. And even with my personal relationships, like one of my best friends from LA, who's an actress, we were sitting down casually with friends at dinner, and my fr like our um, our friend asked us how long we knew each other, and she's like, "I met Mo ten years ago," wow. and I'm like, "I've known you for a decade. I <laughs> remember how we met. It's just crazy how time flies." It really is. <laughs> um, okay, and can you tell me how you describe your style of producing? My personal style is perceived as classic. Um, I'm, I love uh, just wearing stuff that is plain, but also my style has uh, evolved with my age. <laughs> when I was in my, uh, when I was in 17, 18, I used to love uh, ripped jeans, uh, more brand oriented uh, outfits. Um, Throughout the years, I got rid of anything that had a logo or shouts out the brand. I don't like literally got rid of everything <laughs> that I had that way from my closet. Uh, comfortable style. I love um, a lot of comfortable brands, mm -hmm. um, linens, um, yeah. like soft cotton. But also my relationship with style, I always have to have to give credit to my father and my late uncle. Uh, growing up, um, me and my cousins and my 
brother and sisters, we used to have an inside joke. We used to call my late uncle the Don because he always used to dress so chic um, <laughs> with uh, three-piece suits mm -hmm. and they loved like the Brioni style, him and my dad. So we always used to look at them and be like, this is like inspiration. Yeah. They looked like they walked in from the set of The Godfather <laughs> <laughs> when we were traveling. <laughs> so when I, uh, when I like dress to events and red carpet events, I always look at that as that is the style that I want it to be perceived yeah. as classic and be chic and elegant. And what do you say no to? What do I say no to? Um, no to me has been very new. It's been introduced the past three years in a form to protect myself. <laughs> I have said yes to a lot of things I shouldn't have said yes because I don't know how to say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now anything that I feel uncomfortable with, I would say no. Okay. And are you reading a book at the moment? <laughs> Um, no, I'm not reading a book, but I am reading a script. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for our final question, how would you like the world to remember you? Mm. Um, that is a big question, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, <clears throat> I would like the world to remember me, obviously in a positive light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to be a pioneer filmmaker in the region. So that's already something uh, that I've used as an example when they speak about cinema in the region. And I'm very happy and humbled that I've been used as an example. Um, that's like a far-fetched reality, but also like I love being, it is a comparison that I've been compared to even though I'm not an actor, but they were like, I've read in interviews before also like, in comments in social media they're like oh you're like the omar sharif of the new era and no i'm not but it is an honor to be compared to that um and he is a complete legend you know who i've said this when uh, i've said this when i wrote I, I wrote a dedication to him when he passed away and i said growing up knowing that somebody like omar sharif existed made me and pushed me to be uh, to not only dreaming but to making it a reality yeah. a, an arab egyptian who has been in movies like dr shifago gone in the wind um, funny girl with barbara mm -hmm. stars and like a screen legend for him to do that in the 50s 60s yeah. made me realize if he can do it i could possibly be able to do it yeah um so if that helps in the sense if somebody in saudi realized that i'm in hollywood whether on a movie set with uh, Hollywood screen legends or in the Oscars or the Golden Globes, attending those events or at a fashion show, like whatever, you know, like the person who is viewing that um, likes, if they realize that I came from Saudi, from a small town in Khobar, and I'm able to do that, I'm sure they could be able to do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time.